Hello and welcome to Global Health TV. In today's show, we'll be looking at the role of genetics in transforming health in Africa and the importance of diversity in genetics to improve health for all. Increasing participation of African scientists and communities is changing the field of human genetics and genomics and leading to profound new insights. We had the chance recently to speak with Charles Rotomy, President of the American Society of Human Genetics, at their recent conference in Los Angeles, California, to discuss why diversity in genetics is so crucial. Genomics in Africa, I think we've been able to sow the seed uh, especially in the context of uh, history Africa, the human heritage and health in Africa populations. We have so turned the tide to a very large extent by engaging African scientists across Africa and giving everybody the opportunity to participate and to study um, you know, health issues that are important to African people. So right now, I think what we need to do is to recognize that achievement and provide additional resources so that we can continue to build on that success story uh, so that we can truly uh, you know, allow African um, you know, populations and scientists to fully realize the gains and progress in human genetics and genomics. We are getting extremely excited about the fact that we now have a very good way to understand how human beings that migrated out of Africa by 100,000 years ago, um, you know, interbred with uh, archaic humans um, in the, you know, the places we call Europe and Asia today, uh, in such a way now that we are beginning to appreciate how that may have some biological functions and also uh, helping us to understand human migration and, you know, history. And also from the medical point of view, um, we are beginning to make very good progress in how we are using genomics to design new therapeutics and to inform how we treat individuals in the context of the practice of medicine, which I usually refer to as the sample size of one. It's you and your doctor. You know? So we are beginning to get some very good insights uh, into how we can actually use genomics to tailor medicine you know, to individuals, reduce adverse effects, and, um, and, and also to be more efficient and, and effective in the therapeutic strategies that we developed. You know, so I, uh, I think uh, genomics is really uh, quite exciting. And for me personally, I look at genomics uh, as uh, almost like a kid in a candy store. And um, you're always discovering something new. Um, and uh, so it's pretty exciting. And the future looks extremely bright, yeah. Next up, my colleague Autry Godfrey speaks to Michael Bauer from the University of Arkansas and Neil Hanchard from the National Human Genome Research Institute about why human genetic research needs to shift focus to increase diversity and improve health. The theme for this year's meeting is celebrating diversity, but that can mean many different things to many different people. So here to discuss what the research of genomics has traditionally looked like and why the need to refocus are two experts in the field, Dr. Michael Bauer and Dr. Neil Hanchard. Thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you. So let's start with that, that exact topic. What has genomic research traditionally looked like and who has benefited from it the most? Well, I'd say that, you know, for a variety of reasons, you know, uh, Traditionally, genomics research has focused, especially human genomics research, has really focused on um, populations of traditionally European ancestry and focused on the diseases that are very prevalent in those groups. Um, and as a result, um, those groups have probably benefited more, although to be fair, everybody's benefited from human genomics, um, but maybe there's a little bit of inequity in terms of who has benefited more than others. And I see you nodding along, Dr. Bauer. So there has been a need to refocus here a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So like even in my research, when I go to work on different populations and there's just not sequencing available for those people. And so you miss out on those and then you're just like trying to play catch up to recruit and 
and build up those resources. So. so why is focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion not only important for research, but for the people that it might benefit? I think, yeah, so we all kind of starting to learn that diverse groups bring different uh, things to a research um, efforts, but in the, it's in the small things that we're missing that to fill in the holes of, of the um, cancer research or whatever it is that uh, can be greatly affected. And is this something that we have maybe been noticing for quite some time? Are we slowly playing catch up here? Yeah, we're, we're sort of like quickly playing catch up after a long time. So <laughs> okay. it's, it's, been, uh, it's been something that's sort of um, been underseeding everything for a long time. But I think now we have the realization and now there's been more of an impetus to move towards having more inclusion, uh, having a greater respect for underrepresented groups and having more diversity as be part of our genomics generally. So now we're aware, we know that there is work to be done with regards to this. How do we build or maybe rebuild trust in some of these underrepresented communities? Yeah, I think trust is trust is a tricky thing um, because I think sometimes there's a presumption that there is no trust. And so people don't make the effort to try and engage those groups. Interesting. Um, and so that, that we shouldn't start with that presumption. That's the first thing. I think there are definitely persons and groups for who are who, for whom trust is a big issue um, and as with trust in any kind of relationship it's it takes sort of a, an investment to sort of ensure that those groups are brought along make sure that as that it's not a single deal, right? You're not just doing a research project or a single paper, a single study, but there's a, a longitudinal relationship that's built up as part of that. And then the other big part about trust is people tend to trust people who are from their own communities. So we need to have more representation from these underrepresented groups among the researchers who are as well as the, the cohorts and communities that we're studying. You're nodding along. Yeah, it sounds like uh, long-term collaboration is kind of what's 100 needed. percent agree. I'm a part of the Public Education and Awareness Committee for um, ASHG, and we actually had um, some re researchers go out and do interviews with leaders in these different communities, and they saw that addressing that the past harms that were caused by um, some of the uh, testing and mm -hmm. that was done on minorities, but addressing that but then also educating them on how it can benefit them. And then, like you said, people educating minority students and then to go into the field, because they're the best ones to kind of communicate to their families, friends, and their communities. All right, final question for you both. Like I mentioned, this year's meeting theme is celebrating genetic diversity. What does that mean to each of you? Um, to me, I think it's, uh, we kind of, it's in our diversity that we can build the full picture of the human um, condition or, or whatever. And so we celebrate that, our differences that kind of bring us all together. In the end. Yeah, and I'd also say we celebrate the oneness, right? We're all sort of derived from the same groups and we, we, we have um, many, many common ancestors in common. And so I think that we have the opportunity to celebrate that in its fullest breath, that means for people everywhere. That's it for this show. Next time, we'll be speaking to activist Loretta Ross, one of the African-American women who first coined the term reproductive justice. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>